don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm going to begin my project with you um, with a little bit of an explanation and a little bit of a, um, a kind of reasoning behind what I've done later on which you'll see. So but first of all I keep getting asked what the difference is between um, the American size A2 and the Euro size A6 um, and so what I've done is I've, I've pretty much just put like a little bit of a, a demo together for you just so I can explain also so that people in the States can understand what I'm talking about when I'm saying about A6 and people in Britain and the Europe can understand what I mean when I'm talking about A2 sized cards. Okay so Standard sized paper in the States is 8.5x11, you'll know that. In um, Imperial, obviously 8.5x11. In metric, they're 216mm by 279.5mm. That is slightly different to UK A4 size. Now UK A4 size is 210 by 297 so it's not quite as wide but it's longer so the American version is actually wider but not quite as long so that will affect the way that you create those size cards because if you cut this down the middle and then fold that to create a top fold card or score it along the middle this way and then cut it to get a side fold card the way that I've done there look. If you did that with an 85 by 11 you'd get a different sized card. You'd get one that was slightly wider but slightly smaller. So the American sized A2 and the, the European sized A6 see not quite as wide but longer top to bottom. A2 wider but shorter. So a slight difference. Now, now that we've got that out of the way, the reason why this is kind of important to somebody like me is that when I create a digi kit, a digi downloadable kit, I have to take into consideration the fact that A4 isn't quite as wide, so I can't put anything in this space <laughs> And if I create a digi kit that's right down to the bottom, then if the Americans print it on their 85 by 11 it's going to cut off. So I have to find some kind of workaround to make sure that it doesn't fall within that space and it doesn't fall within that space there. So it's within that kind of um, border area that I have to create stuff. So also, if I wanted to create a panel that would fit both sizes, I would have to create one that was um, the larger size on both the width and the height to ensure that it fits both sizes so that if you're in the US you just cut down a little bit off that way, <laughs> cut the bottom off a little bit. If you're in the UK you just cut some off from the side makes sense. So when I've created digi kits I do them at the widest point so I do them at 104 but I do them at 144 in height which makes sense. So five and seven eighths in height but four and a quarter wide so that they would fit both sides so that everybody Europeans as well as people in the US can utilize my digi kits. Right so now that I've explained that this is what they look like when they're printed. So this panel here is 104 wide by 144 in height. So you just either have to cut it that way or cut it that way to get it to fit. All the other bits, it doesn't matter. But if you can see, I've made sure that there's nothing in that section there. So when you print it off in the States, eight and a half by 11, it's not gonna cut anything off. So these three, um, vintage Christmas collage sets which are available now to purchase on my website 
can be used to create vintage Christmas collaged cards. Either A6 or A2, wherever you are. So it doesn't matter where you are, these will still fit both sides or both sizes of card US or European. Right, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to batch make. So what I'm going to, well, I'll start off just by doing one of all three. So they're pretty much going to be the same. So each one is colour coordinated. So you've got a bluish version, you've got a greeny version, and you've got a ready version. You've got Santa, you've got a Christmas tree or Tenenbaum, and you've got a little girl that's going to be hanging some holly and a wreath on this bit here. Each one has got a mini um, Christmas carol music sheet. You've got Silent Night on one, Jingle Bells on the other, and Come All Ye Faithful on t'other one. Um, you've got a Merry Christmas on each one, but there's also a second one which is slightly different from the other. And each has got different little bits to put on. Now, on the Christmas tree one, I appreciate that the Christmas tree shape is going to be really, really fiddly to cut out. Even for the most adept fussy cutters, let's just turn that round the right way. Cutting round those candles and the edges of the trees is going to be nigh on impossible for a beginner or somebody with dexterity problems, arthritis, that kind of stuff. So, if you're not up to it, ladies and gents, don't worry. I've already laid it on top of the jingle bells there for you so you don't have to bother cutting that bit out. You can just, I won't say cheat, but I've just made it a slightly bit easier for you to handle. See, thinking of you while I was doing it, the other shapes are fairly easy. I mean, that one's not too bad. And the girl isn't too bad either. And that star doesn't have too many issues. And you can always work your magic around that bit there as you'll see when I use it, or if I do use it at all. Um, so what I'm going to do to start off with, I'm going to go away and I'm going to cut out all of my bits. Now, because I'm in the UK, all right, I'm going to do A6 for two of them, but just for one, just to show you, I've already got a cream A2 sized card bank that I'm going to do just to show you the difference of what you can do to make sure you understand why I've done what I've done. So I'm going to go and cut all these out and I'll be back when I've done. Okay so I've cut all the pieces out of those three kits and I've just popped them into these little envelopes just so that I don't lose any. Um, so I'll just show you what I've done, so I've cut those bits out, I've cut her out, I've cut all the little embellishments out, haven't cut those two out yet because I thought I might use that one instead, and I've cut those two out. So all I want to do now is just to go around each of the items just with a vintage photo distress marker just to get rid of all those kind of white raw edges. Now you can sit and do all this for all of the kits all at the same time if you want to or you can just do it um, when you're ready to actually put the kits together. I find it easier to actually do it all beforehand. So I'm just going to whip round just really carefully with distress marker on the cutout kind of collage bits like on those and on the small bits around that but for the larger square areas obviously I want to um, distress these all the way around so I'm just going to use a vintage photo just to kind of grunge up. I mean this has already got a little bit of foxing and grunging to it already built into the design um, as part of the image but just to kind of build up that vintageness if you like let's go around the outside I 
doesn't take long really. It don't take long at all. But also, not only but also, um, what I want to do is, now if I can find my, it always tends to disappear. There it is. Okay, so this is an edge scruffer. Um, I believe Tim Holtz does one through tonic, but all you do is just go put the um, piece of card into your little hole, which has got a blade in it, and it just roughs up and distresses the edges of your bits of paper. Now, of course, you could do this with the blade of a pair of scissors, but if you're like me and you have a tendency to stab yourself all the time, then this is probably the safest way to go. But if you're very careful and you haven't got one of these, you can just use the straight or the flat edge of a pair of scissors. And I will show you exactly what I mean on that music paper. But once you've done that, you can then go back around and redistress the bits that you've just scuffed. So we've got that bit. I'll show you what I mean by the scissors. So if you take your blade of the scissors and just run it along the edge. You pretty much get the same effect, but like I said, if you're not quite steady with your hands, then probably getting one of those edge scruffers like that is going to be a lot safer. Definitely a lot safer. There's a reason I keep my scissors with that guide on at all times because I always have a tendency to stab myself, put my elbows in things, or stab myself. Happens all the time. Okay, so now you've seen me go around the edges. I'll carry on, I'll do the other three kits, or sorry, the other two kits, and then I'll be right back when it's time to start layering and gluing all our little collage items together. I'm just going to go around the edges of her as well, just to darken her up a little bit even though I've gone around the edge with the pen. It's actually very therapeutic. Oh, I forgot to mention as well, um, the circles. Um, they do fit. I've made them so they do fit a one inch circle punch. So you don't have to worry about cutting out little circles if you have a one inch circle punch. Okay, so I've zoomed in a little closer onto the bits and pieces for my first card. So we've got the tartan background or the plaid background, we've got the music paper, we've got our little bit of a wreath, we've got Santa, we've got some holly, and we've got that little present, and we've got the choice of the two little sentiments for this one. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a mixture uh, for the collage. So for the first, I'm gonna, this is the card base by the way, so this is an A6, Euro A6 card base and I've cut the backing paper appropriate to fit. So on the sheet all I did was cut a couple of millimetres down the one side because the length was fine. So that's going to be the base. So I'm going to take the next sheet which is going to be the music paper, so I'm going to flip that over grab some glue and begin 
just to layer those pieces together. Now if you watched my Seven Days of Halloween series and you saw me um, rip a little bit, create like a little window um, on the mat, you can do the same sort of thing here to reveal more of that plaid paper if you want to, but you don't have to. Easy if you don't. So just stick that straight down. Now because we've got those nice kind of like rough edges, it looks amazing. Next one, I'm going to place the wreath just across the top there, just for another bit of a layer. So I've turned that over, grab the glue, just go all the way around. Don't have to go all the way to the edges. It's not really necessary. Flip that over and then I'm just going to put it slightly offset so it's about there. Don't mind that you can't see um, the, the title of the sheet of paper, it doesn't really matter. And don't forget I have gone around all of the edges with the Distress Ink, the Vintage Photo Distress Ink, um, just to kind of give it that faux aged look. Okay, so the next bit, obviously we've got Santa, so grab the glue again, just go around the edges, like I said before, you don't need huge amounts of glue for this, because it doesn't matter if they curl up at the edge, that's just the way it goes. Then I'm going to stick Santa down, just kind of in the centre like so and then I'm going to grab my sentiment and I think for this one we will have the merry and bright I'm going to put it just across his feet there so I'll just turn that over and then just add some glue keep the merry christmas one to one side and then just put that across Santa's feet somewhere in the middle just give it a push down like so and then for the two final bits I'm going to grab some 3d foam pads so a little pop dots just grab a knife it's easy if you actually spear these and I'm just going to turn that over and just add one into the center peel the top off and then I can position that on the front, just in that corner, and then do the same thing for the holly. Stick it in the middle, peel the top off, and then I can just peel that round and then lay that just in that corner. So there's a little bit of dimension there. And then I can just flip that over, get the glue, and then just put a little bit of glue around the edges. Uh, starting to run out, I think. Time to replenish. Grab the front of my card, and then because I've used that spirit glue, I've got just enough time just a bit of wiggle room just to get it just right and there we go one little vintage front and then on the inside you've got that other remaining sentiment so you can just drop a little bit of glue on that and then you can put that somewhere in the middle or towards the top, wherever you want. And then you can team that up with a little envelope. Chops a gun. So that's one A6 card from that set. So I'll now make a start on the second one, but this time I'm going to do the A2 size. So this is going to be 
the smaller version than the A6 version. So again, I've gone around all of my bits and pieces. Now for this one, I did say that um, for those of you that didn't, or couldn't quite manage to cut that out itself, that you could just use the single layer, I did, just to prove, and I'm not showing off, but I did cut it out. It did take a little bit longer, but you know, um, it took a little bit longer. I took my time with it, um, but if you don't, you know, nobody's going to come knocking on your door. The craft police won't kick your door down at 6 a.m. in the morning because you didn't cut the Christmas tree out perfectly. You know, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> but I can put that to one side now and use that for something else. So, this one from the sheet. Because the width was correct, I just had to cut down the bottom part to get it to fit. So again, I'm going to use that as my base. I've cut a piece of cream cardstock for this one. And once again, we're just going to do exactly the same thing. Now I'll have to use a different glue for this because I'm running out of the other one, but it's still the same. This is just white craft glue. So and you can see, I did actually print one of these off before on the back, but it didn't print out properly so I just turned it over and reprinted it and then it was fine. So we've got a nice kind of vintage green damask that has been um, distressed. So stick that down, just give it a little push. Then you have your Christmas tree. So just a little bit of the little craft grow around the back. See, nobody's going to see the fact that you've already printed it once. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to put this one just towards the top. So we've got jingle bells um, for this piece of vintage Christmas carol. I did say, uh, you what, what what you got there earlier? And I said, I've got jingle bells. He says, no, you can get cream for that. It's typical of him, that one. So for the sentiment for this one, we're going to stick with the Christmases here. So again, a little bit of glue on the back. Don't need mountains of it. Lay that towards the bottom. Like so. And then for this, we've got the little girl writing a Christmas cards and that so we've got a couple more foam pads I'll use some different ones this time one's a bit bigger I can actually use get my fingers on that one and then I'm going to just stick her in the corner either side of the sentiment and for the other side we've got the calendar page for the 25th of December And I'm just going to put that at a jaunty little angle, like so. Turn it over, add your glue. Oh dear, to me that's running out as well. It is as well, though. That's just not on. There's enough there to get it stuck down anyway. So turn that over. So we've got our A2 sized card and then I can just lay that one down right in place and then again with that remaining sentiment I can just open up the card, I did a top folder on that one somewhere in the middle and then we have another one now I don't have an appropriate sized envelope for this one because I was at A6 but an A2 will fit but you've got just a bit more space in it but which is fine so I'll put that to one side so that's our little A2 sized Christmas card with a little bit of dimension at the bottom and then 
Well now we'll make a start on the last and final one, which was the blue version. But I think for this one we'll use a different coloured card base. So we've got lighter coloured card bases on that one. I think I'll go for something a wee tad darker, just because we can. So for this one I've gone for a kind of a nice deep kind of like chocolate brown which I think is going to work really really nicely. So once again, let's move those bits out of the way, I've got my beautiful kind of Christmas collage paper. So I'm going to just grab some, let's see whether or not this is going to work for me now. Oh. Hopefully it's not completely clogged. There we go. So this is Aileen's Clear Tacky Gel, Clear Gel Tacky Glue. Okay, so we've got our Silent Night paper on this one. So this is the music paper. Okay, turn that upside down so it flows. And again, place that down in the middle. So once you've actually cut these out and you've distressed them and done what you want to them, they're pretty easy to put together. It's just a question of glaring, glaring, layering and gluing. Glaring. I like it. So, a little bit of glue. So add that just about there. And where's she going to go about there? Just over to the side, bring that down a little bit, I think. Okay, so add some dough into the back of our little girl. Put a little bit on the holly that she's holding. down like so, kind of centre her up, she kind of fits really, really nicely on there. Now I did say that I thought about using this complements of the season on this one but I don't think I will. I think I'm going to stick with um, the same kind of set, so we've got festive greetings on this one. Let's add that little bit of glue. So each one of the cards is going to look the same, in a similar style but different. So we'll do festive greetings down there across the bottom. Let's give that a little bit of a push with the glue. And then once again we can bring in those little elements just to add a little bit of dimension a little pop dot foam dot so let's stick him there because he's looking inwards that way and then we've got the 25th of December Christmas Day great little embellishments these These would make quite nice large-ish tags as well. So let's just lift that up a little bit. Yeah, about there. Give that a push down. Okay, move those foam pads out of the way. And we can flip over, grab the glue. You need to be quite strong to use this glue, particularly when it starts to get air in it. Okay. Probably does help if you actually do keep it the right way up. 
Right, so this time we've got our darker framed card base. And we'll just drop that down. We've got, like I said, we've got a little bit of wiggle room just to make sure we've got it in the centre. So that looks really nice with a dark frame. And that dark card base. And then flip the card open and then we can just grab that glue just to see if there's any of that on the left. Yeah, just enough. And then we can add the Merry Christmas sentiment to the inside. Just like that. And again, this time we wanted to, you could team that up with a different coloured envelope. I've actually got a black one there, but that works really, really well. So A2 will fit inside that envelope. And then our original red Christmas will fit on that one there. So those three sheets make those three cards. And like I said, you can custom and tailor if you're making A2 cards for the US or A6 if you're European and I think Australia too. So there you go. A real versatile kit. But don't forget, you can also make art journal pages out of these as well. You're not limited to cards with these. These can make great little art journal pages or even, or even, I could actually say, you could make some really nice kind of tags using these embellishments on the front if you wanted to. And don't forget, you can embellish these as well if you want to. You can add bows, you can add glitter glue onto the Christmas tree or on the wreath. Um, you can add like, baker's twine buttons, little gems, just to kind of bling it up if you're that way inclined. So there you go, that's what I meant to say. So, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed watching me do those. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. Don't forget, that DigiKit is available for download right now on the website. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.